What is not a bullet you dodged, but a huge tactical nuke you dodged. After a night of partying a bunch of us wanted to go watch the sun come up at a local beach when we had just graduated HS. There wasn't a sober one amongst us, and one guy volunteered to drive in his minivan. A few of us said no let's watch it from the deck, but he said he was sober enough. I just had a bad feeling, and a bunch of us stayed back and slept it off at the house. We were all woken up a few hours later about 8 o'clock to phone ringing off the hook, cops, and freaking out parents. Pre-cell phone days. They were in a really bad single car Oliver accident 4 of 6 dead. No one wearing seat belts. They would have had to have taken a curve at about 160 km slash h. That was a rough summer. Oh, and survivor's guilt and depression is a real thing. When driving in the Upper Peninsula in Michigan last summer a truck full of logs flipped and barreled straight into my car. Completely demolished the car, someone else had to come open the door for me after the fact, because they were all pinned shut by logs. I walked out of there without a scratch on my body. My wife dragged my ass to the dermatologist for a cyst I have had for years. While there the doc noticed a mole on my ankle that he didn't like. Turned out to be melanoma. Would have never gone if my wife didn't force me. Yesterday I was driving and waiting for the left turn arrow to turn green. I kind of spaced out and then realized the arrow turned green about a second ago and took my foot off the brake. As soon as I did that, a huge pickup truck ran the red light from my left and didn't even tap the brakes. If I hadn't zoned out, the truck would have hit my door right where I was sitting in my car and I probably wouldn't be typing this right now. I was engaged to someone, but then came to my senses and broke it off. Nine months later I found out she got married to someone else, then about one year after that she killed her husband. I was driving home from visiting my brother in Vermont when a snowstorm started. I didn't have much experience driving in serious snow and I completely lost control. Car careened off the road and I was heading for a giant boulder at around 50 or 60 miles per hour. I felt time slow down and I reflected on my life for a moment and then said goodbye to my body. Suddenly, I was jolted out of it by an abrupt impact, but I could see that the boulder was still 20 or 30 feet away. When I got out of the car, I saw that I had hit a little skinny tree that I could have easily grabbed with one hand. However, it had a giant root system that lifted the car off the ground and stopped me. Car was totaled, but I was completely fine because of that little tree. There is no way I would have survived the other impact. 24 years old, had a pesky sore on my tongue that was really bothering me. My boyfriend's dad was a dentist so, when I was over at his house one night I asked him to take a look. He recommended I go see an oral surgeon the next day for him to check it out. The next day I decided it was feeling better, so I tried to cancel my apt, but my boyfriend's dad insisted I go. I went, and the oral surgeon pretty much diagnosed it as cancer on the spot. It was aggressive, and by the time of my surgery to remove it, it had already spread to multiple lymph nodes. They ended up removing over half my tongue followed by chemo and radiation. Given how aggressive it was, I often think that if I had put off the doctor's visit any longer I probably wouldn't have survived. I'm coming up on my 10 year anniversary in January. Uncle Sam wanted to draft me during the Vietnam War. At the last minute during the physical I pointed to the surgical scar on my shoulder and said to the doc, I don't really trust this shoulder. Any problem? Next thing you know they take x-rays and after a bit of a wait the colonel in charge of the place said to me, I'm sorry son, but I'm going to have to disqualify you. And home I went, a free man. Second one, leaving a campus tavern on a sunny summer afternoon and walking barefoot with my friend on the warm rails of the train tracks, we commented that if a train were to come we'd feel it in the tracks the same way the original inhabitants could put an ear to the tracks and hear a train coming from miles away. Not two seconds after that comment the train horn sounded behind us. 
It was coming on at about 20 to 25 miles per hour and we jumped off with only a few feet to spare. Glad the engineer happened to be looking. Walking to work in the winter. Halfway through a step forward under a sky bridge when an icicle taller than me, 6 feet, and probably to around at the base, crashes down asterisk asterisk right asterisk asterisk in front of my nose. If my bus had been a half second earlier, if I had walked even a tiny bit faster pace, I would have been impaled from brains to balls. I was frozen in place for a minute, quietly surveying my near death. There was another pedestrian nearby who witnessed it in the wide-eyed, as hen look on his face as he stared at me confirmed just how narrowly fortunate I was that day. On a road trip in college with four friends. We stopped halfway for a pit stop, because I had explosive diarrhea, and was getting more sick by the minute. Friends carried on to Vegas, and left me with one of the guys who rented us a car to return home. The friends that carried on got into a rollover. One died, two will be injured for life. My wife and I were prepared to buy a nice riverfront property in 2019, but the owners, her dad and uncle, were dragging their feet. We had our down payment, we were approved for the mortgage, and we had even been living there paying rent. Then the river rose 30 foot slash 10 meters, and we had to evacuate. The water kept rising. The house was destroyed before we bought it. So we didn't buy it. This happened before cell phones existed. I had a long commute home, and on a rare occasion my husband drove into the city to meet me. I started for home about 15 minutes before he did. On the stretch of highway 101 that I needed to be on for about 20 miles, there was a big rig in front of me that seemed to be driving erratically. I got this weird feeling and just moved over to the next lane and accelerated past him. In my rear view mirror, I saw the big rig run over the car in front of him, flip to its side crushing the cars in the next lane where I had just been. My husband was behind the accident and as the police were letting cars file past in single file, he saw one of the crushed cars had a red bumper. He got home a couple of hours after me and said he'd never been so happy to see my red car in the driveway. That he'd been holding his breath as he turned down our street because he really expected me to be under the big rig. Didn't go to a Halloween party because I got a bad feeling. Found out years later five girls were waiting for me so they could pummel me to the ground all because I was friends with one of the girl's boyfriend at one point and he had admitted he found me attractive. Was chatting with a woman at the bar, nothing flirtatious just casual banter. I told her I needed to head out and she asked if I could give her a ride. I was headed that way so it wasn't a big deal. We pull into her driveway and I can see a guy at a computer in the living room through the window. I ask who it is, and she replied that's my husband, he's a pansy. I'll bring him outside, and you scare him off, then we can have the house all to ourselves for the night. Every alarm bell in my head was ringing and all I could think was how do I get this crazy out of my truck without a big scene, so I said sounds good, as soon as she was halfway to the door I put it gear and burned rubber. When buying our first house, everything was ready to sign, but at the last moment the realtor and company realized the home was in a designated flood zone. One in every 100 years or so. Very minimal chance, but still required by the bank. Home was fully renovated, gutted to the bones and redone. I had taken the day, hired the movers etc and last minimum on a Thursday the seller couldn't meet and wanted to postpone a day for Friday. Rain came that night, flooded the house at least 2-3 to three feet inside the property. While surveying the damage, seller said himself he wouldn't buy this thing, even after a clean out, so we got our small deposit back and found the home we live in now about 3 years ago. Seller wasn't aware the property was in a flood zone and as such, had no insurance for it. My father-in-law was working on construction of a power plant and with scheduled work Sunday was a union pipe fitter. Saturday he got a call from another company asking him to run a job much closer to his house 
think 5 minute commute vs 50, so he accepted and didn't go to the power plant job Sunday. That day there was an explosion at the plant and people in the crew he was working with wound up getting killed. Edit, doing everything to avoid using the cliche this blew up given the context. To confirm because it was being asked a lot, yes this was the plant in Middletown, Connecticut. This was a pretty significant event in the state of court and made national news, so I'm not shocked so many of you were able to identify exactly where it was. I'm sure my father-in-law wasn't the only one that didn't go in that day as it was also Super Bowl Sunday. We were in Italy on a school field trip, we decided to play Schweiner Hoffen, pig pile, dog pile, anyways on person, is declared the pig and everyone has to jump on them. We played this on a beach at night. Just sand, no danger, right? Well, the last round we got up and realized we formed this pile next to a 1 meter metal pole sticking out of the ground. It was maybe 10 centimeters away and could have easily impaled the first 3 to 4 people. We didn't play that game again. Few years ago I was in a small fender bender. Someone merged into my lean with me in it and smashed my driver side door and their passenger door together. I had pulled my arm in from having it hanging out the window about 15 seconds before that happened. Would have most likely had my arm ripped off. Almost wound up at the I-35W bridge collapse in Minneapolis years ago. My uncle, cousin, and I were on our way to a twins game. We were originally planning to take the route that crossed the bridge, but last minute decided to take a more scenic route. After it happened, we were talking, and we figured it probably would have been within a couple minutes of the time the bridge collapsed that we would have been on the bridge 